Hello everyone, if you know me on a personal level, which isn't much of you, then you know I've been trying to make thermite for a really long time. But recently, due to some developments, I've made a breakthrough. Here I have a magnet wrapped in paper. See, there's nothing on top of the paper. And if we bring it to this aluminum, Yeah, aluminum isn't quite supposed to do that. So I've been accidentally trying to use ferro aluminum for thermos for half a year. So obviously nothing was gonna ignite, as only God knows what was in there. Yeah, that makes sense! I mean, on one hand, it does make sense that it was ferro aluminum, as I ripped it from some random ass aluminum fence. But now, after getting some pure and truer aluminum, we're kind of set. So welcome back everyone to another video where I teach you how to make thermite properly and better thermite. You know, for uh, peaceful purposes. Typically thermite is composed of rust, red iron oxide and aluminum. Unfortunately, I do not have any red iron oxide, and that video I made on how to get it requires a lot of work to purify to its purest form. I do, however, have this black iron oxide, which I can turn into red iron oxide by oxidizing it, but that's also a lot of work. So instead, I'll teach you another method, how to make superior thermite using uh, copper oxide, which I will teach you how to produce. This copper oxide thermite is not only superior with its ignition, but also explodes much easier and burns much hotter. Nice. So the reason this copper oxide makes a much better thermite than red iron oxide is because copper rusts much harder than iron because copper is pretty unreactive, it means it doesn't like the oxygen as much, which makes it a much better oxidizing agent than red iron oxide causing it be, to be more willing to give up the oxygen to the aluminum. So I'll cut to the chase. To make pure copper oxide, not iron oxide, we're gonna basically need to do the same thing as I did with my copper hydroxide vitio. Kinda. So to get this stuff, we need to electrocute the shit out of copper in the presence of water. So that means more electrochemistry. This process is kind of efficient, but it's efficient enough, so let's stick to it. So, to electrocute it, I made this array of copper wire plate-like things. Ideally, you want as much of them as possible, and as little distance between them as possible as well as to maximize the surface area. I think so, but I'm not sure. You can see this thing has a bit of use on it. There is a bit of copper hydroxide forming on top of it because I used it before. You couldn't have possibly thought I was doing nothing this whole time. I used it before and then I kind of put it away after my shitty aluminum didn't work. Do agree to stay away! I lied. So now I'm gonna need to put this into water and then electrocute it. You can see how all of the wires are set up. So it's really nothing complex. There's no fancy engineering going on. I didn't pour too much salt into this water, just enough for it to conduct a little bit. Because the less salt, the easier it will be to make the most pure copper oxide possible. So uh, yeah, now that we submerged it, we can begin shocking it. So blue and brown shit begins flying out of it. So immediately you can see some blue stuff flying off. I'm guessing that's copper hydroxide and a bit of hydrogen bubbles as well. In case you're wondering what the ideal voltage is for uh, the procedure, um, I don't know, but not too high or it will begin overheating. So I would, Unlike usually, you recommend not keeping this overnight and actually keeping an eye on this thing like every, I don't know, half an hour, an hour or so to make sure that the water doesn't start boiling. So there's a bit of stuff flying off from it. Um, you can see how there's a bit of 
scraps of uh, copper oxide chunks flying off that's because well first of all this thing isn't new i used it before but no effect in the actual thermite but that doesn't really matter so as you keep running this thing its resistance will drop for some reason i'm guessing that the copper oxide or copper hydroxide does kind of conduct electricity a little bit but yeah, there should begin some precipitate forming. Um, blue, it's very blue now. But there should also begin so begin forming some brown precipitate very soon. And I don't know, orange precipitate and stuff. So let me keep this thing running. It's running at 4 volts right now. Maybe 4.1 volts. So I'm going to keep it running for... A few hours or until something interesting happens and then i'll come back and show you the results you can see some of the precipitate is sinking to the bottom i just kind of wanted to show that because it looked cool so if you look really closely you can see that there is a very small level of residue at the bottom that's all the insoluble stuff sinking down all right so i kept this thing running at three volts approximately for seven hours it is 2 a.m. right now. As you can see, there's hardly any bubbles forming, and it is incredibly dirty. Here, I'll try and get a better view. All right, I got a slightly better angle here. You can see that the deposition is in a few layers. The very bottom one is blue. There's one a little at the, a little lower, but that is just mainly it just sunk because of the different densities. The blue layer is copper hydroxide. The orangey layer, orange greenish layer over here is copper one oxide so copper two oxide here uh here's a formula <laughs> the black layer is copper oxide copper two oxide or copper oxide c-u-o that is the black layer uh they formed of this because of the uneven way the electrolysis happened. I know why that happens. It would take a month to figure out, so I'm just not gonna bother. So now we can unplug this thing. Uh, let's unplug it and let's transfer the contents of this thing into a taller glass to let all the precipitate sink in. All right, so I transferred the contents of this jar into this cup. And as you can see, it quite literally looks like shit. Like it genuinely looks like something died in here. Despite its looks, let's look at its personality. It's soft. It's wet. And it's surprisingly inorganic. Completely. You see, any organic compound, like dirt, which you think this is, is 100% composed of organic molecules. And this is just copper salt suspended in water. So it matches up 0% besides the water. Though this stuff isn't literal dirt, it is much more toxic, so if I would drink this, I would die. This layer over here is purely composed of copper salts, 100%. So it's composed of the blue layer, copper hydroxide, the, the black layer, copper oxide, and the orange layer, copper half oxide, if only there was an actual name for it. But anyway, yeah, we gotta wait for this thing to fully precipitate, move it into some jars, pour the water out, you know, the drill. Wonderful. Now that most of the precipitate has precipitated, I have about this much left from the whole amount that I made before. It is now time uh, we gotta cook. I am not a really good cook. Last time I tried cooking something, I accidentally set the microwave on fire. But either way, um, we gotta do exactly just that. We gotta burn this stuff. So we begin by dumping it in. Looks like hot chocolate. Okay, now we actually gotta cook this. Let's turn the stove on to any heat. We just wanna boil all of the water out so there is only powder at the bottom. Uh, then we gotta burn the powder. Like, in the most literal sense. We gotta oxidize it to the point there is nothing left here to oxidize. So it is pure copper oxide. Do not use a microwave for this. It will blow up. Ah, wonderful. What a good day cooking hot chocolate. Ah, shit. 
By the way, if you're trying to boil something soluble, like salt, and you're trying to boil the water out of it, you can wash uh, the spoons which you used with water afterwards, but this is insoluble, so water won't cut it. Water will not wash everything off. Use soap instead. As you can see, it's gotten much darker, and in fact, it's turning black right now. Keep boiling it until it's black. Uh, make sure there is no water left, because water disrupts the thermite's efficiency. It is really brown now, to say the least. Now we just gotta scrape over the bottom stuff uh, into a small pile and then keep oxidizing it like that. Now for this thing, you just really need a spoon. And you keep scraping it off, collecting the small pile of dust. This is uh, roughly the volume of the powder which I got. It's not too much, but... As you can see, it's all brown now. Uh, we gotta just keep cooking it until it turns fully black, I think. Okay, now that you can see it's as dark as my soul right about now, uh, we need to wait for this powder, we need to cool it down a little bit, and then we can figure out its mass, its weight, and etc. Alright, so uh, I'm done with the whole process of uh, burning it. Now we need to transfer the contents from here to here via spoon. So this is about as much copper oxide as I got. It's more than I expected. So if we would weigh this with a scale, assuming the paper is 0 0.3 grams, uh, we can tell how much this weighs. It weighs, we got 2.6 grams, uh, 2.3 grams of copper oxide produced in seven hours. This is the batch which I had before, which was inside of this jar. And this is the batch which I just made now. So in total, I have about four grams, a little bit more of copper oxide, 4.4 grams. So now we have to calculate how much aluminum we need to light this whole thing up. Yeah, 4.3 grams. Okay, now we need to get some aluminum powder. For it, we don't use a random ass piece of fence, we use actual tin foil, which is 98% pure aluminum or something like that. Now I've seen people wrapping their powder with tin foil and then just igniting that, but I say screw that, let's disintegrate it. To disintegrate it, you get this piece of aluminum and you roll it into a roll. Um, yeah, just like this. So we get it, and now we need to just file it down. Uh, first of all, we weigh the paper, how much the paper weighs. Yeah, 0.3 oh, grams, as you can see. And then we just need to get uh, this number of aluminum powder. All right, so after the half an hour of work, I got the 0 0.95 grams of aluminum powder. In general, it is a 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 ratio between aluminum powder and copper oxide powder in terms of mass and unlike the previous uh, aluminum which I was used which I used this stuff isn't magnetic or hardly now we just gotta mix this and this so when you're mixing these things uh, you need to mix them really well uh, because the particles are so small and each one of the powders they should mix uh, incredibly well. Make sure to uh, kind of extract all the big bits. However, all the big bits will technically burn up, so there's not really much much point in extracting them. Uh, some people say that afterwards when you mix them you need to compact them, but that's personally never worked for me. So yeah, I guess you can just leave it as a powder, like this kind of way. So after you're done mixing, you should be left with a pretty mixture of two powders. Which uh, kind of looks like stars in the night sky. God damn, that was far too poetic for me. So this stuff is pretty much fully prepared thermite. All that's left is to ignite it. So to inflame the shit out of this, I have this piece of magnesium which I bought off of Amazon. I might soon make a video on how to make magnesium from ore, but no time soon. So now I'm just gonna pour this boom boom powder on the brick which I have, stick a magnesium ribbon in, and set the magnesium ribbon on fire. Now all that's left is to light it. Even though I'm not a big fan of safety, I brought this bucket of water, just in case modern shit starts spraying out of it. Alright, so I compacted it a little, so I know for anyone who tries this, compact it first. 
I said it so the distance between the copper and the aluminum is much smaller, the copper oxide and the aluminum, making each one accessible more for the other. And as you can see, it burns much better now. It's spewing out more than shit and sparks. All right, so that's a notch for the burn. Uh, you know, let's try that again. All right, so definitely compact it much better before you do it yourself. So I'm just gonna light a bit, uh, the little bit which was left on the other side, because I do not want to throw this out. And yeah. So in result, this is the pattern which we got from burning up the thermite. If we go and crack this open, you can see that there is a few interesting results, not all of it ignited fully, so there's a bit of the powder left. My next advice for anyone who tries to do this is to compact the powder first. But if we sift through this and we look hard, we can find a few interesting balls, which might be of interest. That would be copper. So finally, this is what I was left with. There was a bit of unburnt thermite and a lot of slag on top, which consists of mainly just a bit of copper powder for the dark coating, aluminum oxide and magnesium oxide, and this much copper and its alloys. The yellowish stuff, I'm guessing it's either oxidized aluminum or like aluminum bronze or something, I have no idea. Oxidized copper or aluminum bronze or something, I don't know. But there is a bit of pure copper in it. So I'm guessing it out of age. So uh, tip for the next guy who does it, compact it first. So that's about it for this video, guys. I got uh, this much bronze or copper oxide. The copper turned back into copper from copper oxide. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right then, see ya. I'm gonna go clean this shit up now.